Hello, and welcome to this episode of In Discussion With from Medical Update Online. Today, I'm talking to Dr. Catherine McKenzie about delirium, what it is, what causes it, and how we treat it. So, could you start by introducing yourself? So, my name is uh, Dr. Catherine McKenzie, and I'm a clinical pharmacist, very practical clinical pharmacist. Um, I currently have gosh, three roles, which feels quite a lot, doesn't it? But, you know, I'm a clinical academic pharmacist. So that means I have a clinical role and I have funded time to do research as well. Um, My clinical role is within uh, critical care, which which I've worked for 25 plus years um, at the University Hospital Southampton. And my academic role, a clinical academic role is uh, really to support uh, pharmacy professionals, uh, which I'm quite passionate about in engaging in clinical research, as well as leading my own research. And that's over King's Health Partners. Now, first, could you tell us in a nutshell, what is delirium? It's a difficult thing to put in a nutshell. I, I, I suppose the, e- the easiest way probably to describe it is as an acute brain dysfunction. Um, and that's normally are typically in response to a pathophysiological trigger. For example, exposure to a medicine or an acute affection or a change in a chronic condition. The key symptoms of delirium are um, confusion, but this presents as inattention. Um, You know, so you might be halfway through a sentence you can't get to the end. And actually, a lot of the screening tools capture this symptom, as well as uh, disorganisation in thinking. So we ask patients things like, um, you know, um, are there efficiency? Um, is one pound more than two pounds? And they'll often get the answers confused. And it's a change in one's cognitive function from baseline. So that's the, that's the summary of what delirium is. It's very distressing for our patients, for their relatives, and for those that are caring for them. Delirium um, is a a great burden, mostly for our patients. Um, It is the leading cause of cognitive decline um, in the acute care setting. So that's just not in critical care, that's in acute care. So a patient that is in delirium is about, a patient who has delirium, they have a chance of about a third of developing some kind of cognitive decline after their episode. And the longer they're in delirium, the more severe it is, the worse the cognitive decline will be. And elderly patients with delirium um, have a much lower chance of leaving hospital and returning to their own home and leading full and independent lives. In addition, it increases our chance of dying, it increases our hospital um, an ICU length of stay. And as I said last, it's terrifying for patients. It's very distressing for the relatives and it's hugely challenging for those caring for them. So is delirium an indicator of an underlying problem? It probably is triggered by an underlying problem. If, for example, um, the underlying problem may be as, as simple as we're getting old. So you see more delirium in the elderly. But it, it, elderly patients, for example, who get urine infections will often not present with a temperature, they present prevent with delirium. Um, it is not the same as dementia, but it is more common in dementia and may be an indication that patient may develop dementia. And if a patient, for example, you know, that there's a long difference between having a little bit of cognitive decline, you know, having a little bit of failure in memory or remembering things and going in the path to having you know, severe dementia, delirium, um, an episode of delirium will hasten that decline markedly. And is delirium common in intensive care patients, ICU patients? Very common in ICU. So in, in, in patients in ICU, when they're very, very severely unwell, the prevalence is as high as 70%. Yeah. Even higher in patients who are mechanically ventilated. So it's a big problem uh, for our patients. And uh, our recent uh, James Lind Alliance, which is um, 
where we get up, we ask our relatives, we ask our patients, we ask our supporters and our researchers, what is your priority for research within your field? Within critical care, um, agitation and delirium was ranked number three. So it's a huge problem for us and a research priority for us. So it's not just an incidental finding. No, no, absolutely. That's a huge challenge. And I, I actually, it, 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 you know, it um, has a huge impact, particularly of our nursing colleagues who are caring for these patients, who find um, care of these patients challenging and seeing the patients in great distress, they find challenging as well, hugely challenging as well.